have you seen that day when you tell me? I'm Sophia Phillip with Afropop Worldwide. Hi. And how how are you doing today? What brings you here to New York to Afropop? I'm doing New York. Um, I've been here for the last month, going on to two months to catch up on my work um, at the New Museum. I'm part of their incubator program called New Inc. Mm -hmm. So developing a lot of visual uh, content there and art um, to expand on my work, my Fifi Ultra project. So that's what I'm doing. And then I go back on the road in May. So yeah. So you mentioned a little mm -hmm. something, the Fifi Ultra. I would love Fifi Ultra. Yeah. Can you talk more yeah, about it? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I think when I initially stumbled upon it, I, well, it's a rewrite of my grandmother's name. But it started out as inspiration for the narrative that pretty much drives the first EP. Fifi Oto falls in love with a slave master's son in the time of slavery in Ghana. She's an Ewa woman, he's Caucasian. They're found and totally begins that narrative where they're caught. Mm -hmm. And then they're brought before the traditional tribunal. And there are actually about three main characters in Toli plus the townspeople who are going Toli, Toli, Toli. Um, but that's their first judgment. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into um, Pilolo Lombaba mm -hmm. and then Lilene, where the story pretty much ends in um, Fifiawoto being sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. So that started the narrative. Um, and then as it went along, it became more of a character in my mind, a real like energy and essence. Um, mm -hmm. Then it slowly became more defined. Then it became also more like a philosophy and a way of being. And then eventually it just, it's, it, it became this thing that it is now, which is more of a, an energy, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm sort of allowing to be what it wants to be, which is also exciting. Um, it means new birth, new discovery, so that gives a lot of room for it to sort of evolve. Mm -hmm. um, but acknowledging the need for uh, an openness to cause constant evolution in that process of not being committed to who we are today, but allowing ourselves to grow. And if you what it means, Fifiat in the moment, or just now, yeah. or now, or finally, germinated. Okay. Germinated. Germinated. Um, so, this, so then in thinking about that, because yeah, I like to play around with the language or explore what things could mean. Mm -hmm. So, if something is now germinating, it must have existed in the ground mm -hmm. in some form. And then it germinated. But when it germinated, still in that form it existed before it was discovered and affirmed to have germinated, mm -hmm. right? But take away the power of everything else, this process is happening either way. I think that's then the conversation of like energy being transformed. That plant will grow, and it will shed leaves, and it will go through different stages, and it might produce seeds that then grow elsewhere. Mm -hmm. All of that is happening in the forest, whether we see it or not. Mm -hmm. So new discoveries, rebirth, it's happening constantly. And I find that that's the same with us in our world. Like it's happening whether we acknowledge it or not. So then you talked about it a little bit earlier. So kind of feeding into that evolution. We also had some pretty dope stuff go down this year. There's the New Year's Eve celebration. Yes. And there was Lauren Hill. And yes. there was also being recognized as 100 most influential African women. Thank you, OK Africa. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, um, and then also a little like props to Afropunk and that announcement that just came out. Oh, yes! So, so, yes! Okay. Nice so, with, so, like going on with that awesome mm -hmm. squeal of like, that is so legit. But how, how was all that? How was Lauren? Lauren, I can't even imagine. Just a drop in your life. Um, but yeah, how, how has the year been? What did you think of your New Year's performance? And well, I think, you know, six, seven years ago, um, I was in a, on a very different path in life to becoming something completely different from what I am right now. And to look back on that now and then even to look back as as recent as a year ago or two years ago. I have to say that it's definitely been that Fifi Auto process that has brought me here. Mm -hmm. It allows me to, to continue to do all the things that I'm doing. It's been a very exciting year. Um, I'm in disbelief. As much as I sort of manifest and I work towards these things, I'm in disbelief because mm -hmm. sometimes you, you manifest and you dare to dream and then it happens and you're like, oh shit, it happened. And that, that process has been more, um, I guess, intense mm -hmm. 
than knowing that it's gonna happen. I think there's there's faith, of course, but then when it manifests fully, you're just like, oh God, I'm paying God. I have the audacity of God to manifest it. Um, New York, the states in particular, has been very open to me. I think um, Times Square Alliance deciding and voting on an artist like myself to start that that program with New Year's Eve was a huge statement. Um, I think they were being provocative um, and very forward-thinking, and I applaud them for that. I think all of the institutions and organizations that have supported me, they brought me in very intentionally, and it's been to be provocative. Um, mm -hmm. Because it, you know, I'm not vague mm -hmm. with my work or, or my aesthetic, so it's really nice to have that support. It's really nice to sort of see that you know these institutions and these spaces are open, mm -hmm. you know, to provoking their audience and are open to challenging their audience and are open to bring something new into the mix that may not be what people are necessarily used to. So it's 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 been nice to find people like that to partner with and yeah, to collaborate. And I'm really curious about how it's been like because you in throughout these last few years you've been in Denmark, you've been in New York, you've done a lot of work in Africa in different countries. Um, how in being in those different music markets, let's say Europe, or if it even manifests as Europe versus North America versus mm -hmm. Africa. Have you noticed the market's similarities or difference that you find surprising? Um, kind of going off of that stem of like you saying, recently North America has been incredibly welcoming. So mm -hmm. have you found that it's necessary in your evolution to go to different geographical areas or stay and continue to foster those relationships with your audiences? To be honest, I've been eager to live beyond my sort of inherited identity. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my work is about challenging the notion of identity um, and you know sort of forcing it to be this ever evolving thing right? mm -hmm. um, and, and in an effort obnoxiously to live beyond my uh, my race mm -hmm. and my ethnicity um, I've sort of challenged myself to find homes in different spaces and to build a life for myself in different spaces and to connect with different spaces mm -hmm. and cultures um, for the last four years, I would say, especially, I've been very intentional about building networks and uh, building support systems in different places, mm -hmm. uh, these three continents to be specific. Uh, the markets are different. There are similarities, but largely quite different. I felt that America would be my toughest market. Actually, not even that I felt that America would be my tough, toughest market. I was told it would be my toughest market, mm -hmm. and yet I found that it's been the most supportive. Um, I think that, you know, at home in Ghana or in Nairobi, for example, there is a need for us to build infrastructure and to build that network, right? Uh, which is also very exciting on the other mm -hmm. hand. So I enjoy, you know, being present in these spaces and I guess I would attribute it to my need to be omnipresent, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's been rather intentional on my part. And I won't I think the genre of Afro-hypnosonic came up? Yes. Time. I was wondering if you could expand upon especially for folks who maybe aren't familiar with your work, or whether that's maybe <sighs> from a past evolution. No, revolution. that's still that's still there. I think for a long time people ask, what is your style of music, blah, blah, blah. And I only have four songs barely out. And again, that EP is not released. It's been made available, but it's not released for releasing um, in the next couple of months. So technically, I have no really officially released music. Mm -hmm. um, but people would always ask, what's the genre of music that you, you, know, you make? Oh, it's you. jazz, <laughs> it's electronic, mm -hmm. it's Afrobeat, not with an S. Let's get that clear. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, this and that. People just felt a need to know, mm -hmm. like we always do. Just mm -hmm. got enough. We're humans. We Even though we discard crazy. that knowledge within two minutes of, of acquiring mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. So, but we got to know. We just got to satisfy that need to know. Mm -hmm. So, um, Afro-hypnosonic, Afro-inspired, hypnotic, sonically unique, mm -hmm. Afro-hypnosonic. So, it was just a way to sort of have something that described the feeling rather than sort of like it's, it's, it's reggae or it's this or it's that. It's mm -hmm. anything and everything 
It's just Afro-inspired, for sure. <laughs> it's hypnotic. <laughs> and the sonic resonance will be unique. Or to trigger something specific in me. That's all it is. I had seen, my love, what's the name of it? The East African Soul Train. Yes, East African Soul okay. Train. Oh my uh, god. I can oh, only Jesus. get a taste of like the Instagram videos. That was all I was privy to. But um, I would love to hear what what went down. How did you get, because you were the artistic director. Yes. That's that was fun. huge. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> like, let's acknowledge that's huge. Um, yeah, so how did you become a part of it? How, what happened? What did the train, do we like trains at the end of this? We like Nairobi trains. has been a place that I'm, I'm very excited about. I think Nairobi, you know, I went into Nairobi at a time when it was ripe for a rebirth, you know, and uh, for a long time I had been wondering ways in which I could be useful on the continent mm -hmm. beyond just being an artist myself and trying to push my music, which honestly in Kenya hasn't really been a priority for me. Um, so last year, um, no, two years ago, at the end of the year, I went out there to play uh, Black and Some Wine, um, their festival African Nouveau. Went out there for that. Fell in love with one particular artist who was, who was forming a group called EA Wave, um, Jinku, then met the rest of the team and was connected. But there's something about Jinku, this understated, incredibly talented individual who, you know, was just... When I say understated, he's like so low key. Um, <laughs> barely said a word. And something about him just drew me in. And um, it's like, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to do something with you guys. And so about three months later, I said to my now ex boyfriend, I said, like, You have to go to Nairobi. I don't know why. I don't know to Nairobi. And I want to start this residency program. I want to go there for three months. And blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And he's looking at me like, Okay, <laughs> and um, yeah, I it wasn't that I even knew what I was doing or necessarily or that I felt that I, I had learned so much that I had that much to offer, but I wanted to be, to be surrounded by artists who um, were innovative and could work with little and achieve great things, right? So I wanted to uh, put myself in that position and inspire others to be in that position as well. So I went back to Nairobi, ran this residency for three months with groups like EA Wave, Prisca, it was a multimedia residency program. And as a result of that, working with artists like Cosmic Homies, Blinky Bill, um, Mayonde, Muthoni, Drama Queen, these are the people that are leading the underground. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it helped expand this network and this collaborative network. And then a year later, you're finding that other things have sort of happened since then. East African Soul Train started that year. So I went for the first edition, just sort of like an observer. They said, hey, will you come on? Mm -hmm. Just to sort of experience. And I went on and I had some ideas as far as where they could take it. And they asked, would you come on to our direct, draw up the programming, come up with a theme and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And really just design this year's project. And it was really exciting. We had 50 artists from the East African region, mm -hmm. which is dope. Yeah. Uh, different disciplines. Um, a hundred people total. We had fifty passengers from all over, mm -hmm. um, the states, Germany, whatever. Um, so it was a really large team of people. It was intense. Mm -hmm. It was the most intense five days. Um, the first round was about two, three, three days. And then this time we extended to five days. We had two days of workshops, and then we were on the train, and it was super intense. Mm -hmm. Create, 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 create. It really reaffirmed this truth that. We are only limited by, I guess, this, our lack of understanding of our might, if you will, mm -hmm. and what we're yeah. capable of. And, you know, we're crippled in not understanding that the power comes from us and we're the genesis of our creation. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, bringing people into that space of understanding that all they need is the self and then others. And between them and within that network, they can make anything possible, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's really my the idea that I really want to foster on you know in Africa. I think that's yeah. you know you don't need so much. You can you can do a lot. Mega Kudu now as a track we did using Fruity Loops mm -hmm. in a tiny windowless studio with EA Wave, and the video was iPhone only done in my backyard. So you know it's like you can actually do dope shit with like, you know, taking away those limitations, stripping them away, and making, <laughs> and yeah. making the creative yeah. the starting point mm -hmm. you know, of the conversation around creativity and you know, creating magnificent work and this idea of excellence, right? I think Western excellence is in some ways different from 
African excellence, and I think we need to establish what that is for us. I'm feeling full mm -hmm. with conversation. Okay. Full. Thank you. Thank you for coming to Sunset Park. Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.